Hi, welcome to Buzz TV's first episode of Stingline. I'm your host, Caroline Bach. Tonight we'll start with a story that's very near and dear to the hearts of many at Baldwin Wallace. As many of you know, President Durst will be retiring at the end of this year. Stingline's Lucy Anders had a chance to sit down with the president and talk about his time here and what he hopes for the future. Baldwin Wallace College has recently hired a new president, Robert Helmer. Back in the spring semester, current president Dick Durst announced that he would be retiring from Baldwin Wallace after being here since 2006. It's the right time to do it. You know, when I took the job, the trustees asked me how long I would stay, and I said, assuming you'll have me, I'll stay five <laughs> years at least, and it will be six. And, um, you know, we finished the big building projects, the science center, mm -hmm. the conservatory is done, the welcome center will be done, the new master plan is done. So I'm in perfect health, knock on wood. So, um, and I'd like to have some time to enjoy my wife for a change rather than wonder what this lump in the bed <laughs> is next to me. The appointment will become effective July 1st, making Helmer the ninth president of Baldwin Wallace College. Reporting for Stingline News, I'm Lucy Anders. Thanks, Lucy. I'm sure President Durst will be missed by many. There's still one more week left to CBW's production of Spring Awakening. The Tony Award winning rock musical tells the story of teenagers in 19th century Germany discovering themselves, their sexuality, and the harsh reality of the world around them. Spring Awakening is directed by Victoria Bussert and runs through March 4th at the Beck Center for the Arts in Lakewood. For tickets and more information, you can visit the theater's website at www.beckcenter.org. Our next story is about the $1 million grant given to the Center for Innovation and Growth's Student Fellowship Program. We have Stingline correspondent Marty Bielat on the scene. Marty? Baldwin Wallace's Center for Innovation and Growth has received a $1 million grant from the Philip E. and Carol R. Radcliffe Foundation in order to support the Student Fellows Program and the Program's Growth Project, said Peter Ray, one of the founding members of the SIG. But what are the Student Fellows Programs and what are their growth projects? Lori Long, a faculty member in the Student Fellows Program, explained. The purpose of the program is to provide exposure to students to ideas related to innovation and entrepreneurship. What I learned from my interview with Long and Ray is that the students and faculty from the fellowship program work on growth projects, which can compare to consulting groups in the way that they advise current businesses on how to grow. But where does the money come in, I ask? The money is it's paying for staff and students. It's really that simple. So all we do is take the money and reinvest it so we can keep this program up. While the money they receive from the businesses they help is not enough, the SIG thanks the Radcliffe Foundation for their support. Martin Bielat, Stingline News. Thank you, Marty. If you would like to see more, please look at the full-length version of Marty's story on our website. How's your year treating you? According to your peers, they have high hopes for 2012. In an Insights poll, two-thirds of the world's college students said they have higher hopes for this year than last. The younger generation remains positive in focusing on health, environmental awareness, and fighting racial prejudice. On the flip side, the majority polled said that they want to be self-employed, which will make hiring employees harder if they all want to be their own bosses. Are you still fighting acne? Studies have shown cell phones might be the cause of it. Your phone touches many different surfaces in a day. Between touching it with your fingers and holding it to your ear, more bacteria is coming into contact with your face and clogging your pores. Dermatologists can even tell which ear you rest your phone on more frequently. To fight cell phone acne, experts suggest sanitizing it daily and even cutting back on phone usage. In national news, Virginia state legislatures recently passed a bill allowing private adoption agencies to deny child placement in homes that conflict with their religious or moral beliefs. This could drastically affect same-sex couples looking to adopt children. The Virginia governor is expected to sign the bill. This will make Virginia the second state to have this law as of July 1st of this year. North Dakota was the first. Opponents to the bill are arguing on grounds of sanctioning discrimination. Retailer JCPenney recently announced Ellen DeGeneres as their new spokesperson. This announcement sparked an unexpected controversy from the advocacy group One Million Moms. 
One million moms posted a call to action on their website arguing that DeGeneres being openly gay does not represent the traditional families who frequent the store. The group urged its members to call JCPenney's headquarters and stores to complain about the decision. DeGeneres addressed criticism from the group on her show last week. She said, quote, my haters are my motivators. DeGeneres is proud that JCPenney stuck by their decision. Thank you for tuning in to our first episode of Stingline News. For more information about any of our stories and our show, you can visit our website at buzztv.bw.edu. I'm Caroline Bach. I'll see you right back here on our next episode of Stingline.